There is an urgent need to develop the Niger Delta and make the region flourish, reflecting its massive wealth. For so long, people of the area have lived in abject poverty and squalor while development has been elusive. Despite the billions of Naira accruing monthly to various state governments because of its oil-producing status, the Niger Delta has remained stagnated. The sorry state of the region has triggered the inevitable question of if the discovery of oil, one of its main natural resources, is a curse or a blessing. The oil is a curse to the Niger Delta. The oil is a cause in the sense that before the advent of oil, our traditional occupation was fishing and farming and trading. But since the advent of oil, our environment has been polluted with oil spill and gas flaring, including the soil. The oil has destroyed the sea, the marine life has been destroyed, the aquatic life is destroyed, the soil contaminated, our water contaminated, the entire environment contaminated. Even the mangroves have been killed. The, the seafood, the esam, the lobsters, the ingbe, the ofengo, all the things, ingolo, all the things we used to eat, that they can just go to take a boat across to the river and pick and eat. They are all destroyed. There are four everywhere is destroyed. So oil is a cause. Two. Our traditional occupation of fish and farming destroyed means it has left us without job. And the oil and gas has not created job for our people. It has, we have not been able to replace our occupation whereby we can earn a living. So where our environment is bound, we don't have a job, our health is also a problem, affected. Our life expectancy has been reduced. And so entirely is a cost to the Niger Delta. Like Dubai, the oil-rich Niger Delta could have been a world-class destination for business, leisure, and all-round tourism. But obviously, the absence of visionary leaders with conscience and patriotism has made that wish impossible. Many years after the discovery of oil, and with the accumulated trillions that has been raked in, the region still battles with constant power supply, quality schools and health facilities, solid infrastructure like roads and bridges, and so on. The east-west road that connects most part of the region is still incomplete many years after. What's doing our development is uh, corruption. Corruption, cheating, is what's ruining our our development in Niger Delta. When people are positioned in positions hmm, of leading us, rather they take all to themselves, rather than reaching the people at the grassroots. That's what is killing us here in Niger Delta. It is a pitiable situation, but the people in the midst of all these are not giving up. They are staying strong for a better tomorrow that may not be far-fetched with the right leaders. Building the Niger Delta of our dreams is not rocket science. It requires single-minded deliberation and effort. This is why the choice of leaders is important. 
The leadership recruitment system must be elevated to allow for people with global perspective and absolute commitment. There should be complementary efforts between the state governments, the main regional interventionist agency, the NDDC, the multinational companies to drive the needed development. The key focus should be to pursue food security, an integrated power plant to provide constant electricity, a railway system that connects states in the region, a good network of roads and a regional security system. To be fair, we government has been making effort to develop Niger Delta. We created the OMPADEC, created the NDDC, created the 30% derivation, uh, PIA, the, uh, all that. But this thing does not trickle down to the oil bearing communities. Over time, I've been shouting that the oil bearing communities are not benefiting. So we need uh, the governors to use the 30% derivation to address the issue of poverty, they address the issue of underdevelopment, they address the issue of uh, road network, jetty, uh, short professional protection, um, erosion, medical uh, facilities. The Braced Commission can drive this to fruition by coordinating efforts in this regard with great supervision from very eminent people from the region. It is also imperative that the people of the Niger Delta should begin to think beyond oil. It is time to harness and export the raw talents in sports, arts, music and the entire creative industry. The region must also focus on its huge tourism potential to attract foreign tourists and investments. We used to have this tourism beach, but as it has removed from one government to another, they have failed to maintain it. If not, it, it could have been used to generate funds. Niger Delta as a whole is blessed. If you talk about the deltas, they have rubber plantation to survive. We used to have what they call Rizzo Palm. Rizzo Palm was a platform of what they used to produce, to produce palm oils in river states. We also have seaports that are not functioning. With the improvement of seaports, we will have more business partners and it will be easier for us to trade. Like in terms of agriculture without oil, we can places like Ipo and some part of Ikwere Moa and uh, some part of Ogoni land, they have a very fertile ground where agricultural product can grow well and we can do with it. So all what we need to do is to diversify and look inward, all now based on our leadership and government. So the type of industry we want is production company, where if we are able to get all these agricultural products, we can refine, for example, the palm oil. If we are able to refine them, then we will get something like margarine out of it. Then we proceed. The cassava, we can still do the processing and we get cassava a cassava flour and we can see use in baking. The government can send youths outside, like abroad, to go learn, get skills in IT, technology, and then come back here to showcase or to practice what they have learned abroad. By so doing, they will take off youths from the streets, they will better their lives and the society and the economy at large. The younger ones in the South-South should not just be deceived by politicians. Let them really understand the situation we are in and go into it and understand what we, we, we have to do and survive. We should also go into training, industrial training that will develop. The time to do all of these is now before we leave in regret forever.